Okay, greetings class. This is Professor Brown again, and uh, this uh, lecture is going to be, uh, actually it's not a lecture, it's going to be a lab walkthrough, uh, lab number two for CIS 4670. And a uh, couple things, so uh, I downloaded the assignment. So from here, lab two, I just downloaded that doc. All right, I have brought that up here. Okay, and uh, in the instructions, you need to grab a uh, copy of the CIS target machine. So uh, I provided that in an announcement. So if you go to the to the announcements, and did this earlier on in the semester. So yeah, revised link for lab two. It's there's a URL. So paste that in there, and that will start a download from SharePoint that I have open to the world. There it is. So save that. It's about five gigs. I'll take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video until that's done. Okay, so our file has been downloaded. As you can see here, there it is, CIS target uh, 1, 2019. So I'm going to cut that and go to my documents. And then under my documents, I have my virtual machines. And I'm going to paste it there. OK, so now that that is there, extract it. Actually what I'm going to do is I am going to make a copy of it and I just need to save it somewhere else so that if I have a, a mess up I can just go back to the beginning. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it here in a folder Yeah, the problem is it's like five and a half gigs. So it takes a little bit of time. And that's zipped. Almost. Okay, and I'll go back to my virtual machines directory and I'm going to extract this here. That'll take a second. So I'll pause right now until that's done. Okay, so that has been downloaded and we've gotten it put into our um, virtual machine folder. So there you see it there. So now we can open it up in VMware. So I'm just going to go to File, Open, and search for it, wherever you downloaded it. It's right there. Go into the folder, and you just need to get the uh, VMX file, and click Open, and it'll open it up. All right. So with this, uh, you're going to say you copied it. All right, and take ownership. There you go, CIS target, it'll be right there. So it just requires two gigs of memory, two processors. Um, it's got, uh, make sure you have it set to NAT. I did that automatically. And from here, we can just click and power it on. All right, so when you get this sign here, just say, I copied it. And let it boot up. So that pretty much gets us all prepped for the rest of lab two. So now we need to go to this link and download uh, Nessus. Nessus Personal. Let me just check real quick. I have not installed it on this, so that's fine. goes to Tenable. All right. 
And then you just re need to register for an activation code. I'm going to use my um, uh, I think I've already used my um, Cal Poly account, so I'm going to use my WRCCDC account. and I'm going to register. All right. And then you can click on the download Nessus. And then you just need to, you know, this is again from, I think, a previous homework, uh, potentially. And I'm going to grab one for Windows 10. There we go. It looks like this one right here, this MSI, is going to be the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that MSI, agree to the EULA, and save the file. It's only 100 megs, so it sh should go pretty quick. There, it's done. And if I go and look at my email... A different screen here. Sorry about that. There we go. You'll get a no reply from Tenable, which will have your activation code. So you're going to need that in just a second. Let's go ahead and get. downloads there's our MSI you need to run this as administrator I'll just hit the install there we go and it's pretty simple just accept the EULA put it in the default place it's probably going to ask you for admin access which is okay Eventually, it'll add, ask for access. I'll pause this right now. Okay, so there's my acceptance, and it should start rolling through. There we go. I think my uh, screen recording software disrupts with installation sometimes, so I have to be careful of that. Okay. And files in use. Some files may disrupt. So, oh, I have Word running. So I have the lab running. I'm just going to kill that real quick. There we go. Quick retry. Hopefully, it won't. Hopefully, Camtasia will goof it up. Okay. All right, it looks like I need to uh, shut this down to uh, do that. I'm just going to hit ignore. Shouldn't make a big difference. There we go. And I'll be back when it's... Oh, wait, maybe... It, I'll be back when it's done installing. Okay, and so we are back and it's installed. We're going to click finish. All right, it says you got to restart your system. I'm not going to restart it now. I don't think you actually have to. 
Okay, so it comes up and it will say, hey, do you want to connect the neck to Nessus? I'm going to click via the uh, SSL there. And then it'll ask me for a sign in. don't know whether it actually gave me a sign-in or not. I'm going to copy this. I think I've signed into this already. Yeah, I have. So you will probably uh, get a splash screen to do that. Um, So if you go to settings and license and utilization, it's going to let you scan up to 16 IPs. Woo. So uh, I think I missed the, because I've, I've done this already, uh, software updates, master password. Yeah, I've already set that up. So in your setup phase, you'll get that um, activation code, and you'll put that in. I think I went over that in a previous lecture somewhere. Anyway, so let's just go to scans. Uh, we're going to need to scan that IP of CIS target one. So I provided you with the uh, credentials, I believe, in the Word document. Let me go back and get the Word document. So we don't need to have that shut down right now. Okay, so I believe hmm maybe I didn't anyway it's changed me one two three with a capital C so <clears throat> I may have put that in an announcement earlier but it is change me one two three with a capital C for the administrator account. So capital C H A N G E M E one two three. That is your admin password. So what we need to do with this is we need to set up a scan. Um, I'm just going to do the activation later. You can actually hit activate now and this VM will activate uh, surprisingly enough. So as I log in here with uh, I'm just going to make this a, say, home. And close it. I'm going to close that. So if you're on NAT, you should be able to activate online. Microsoft is really not caring very much about Windows 2008 anymore. <laughs> so they just basically say, okay, great. Hey, you're activated. So I don't need to be in server manager at this point in time. What I do need to do, though, is I need to, there we go, activation was successful. Yay, you won't have to ever worry about that splash screen anymore. Uh, and then just bring up a command prompt and find your IP. So IP config all and whatever your IP is. It's like you got 192.168.113.140 for me. All right, so I can ping myself. Great. And at this point in time, uh, I'm just going to make sure that my firewall is off. It should be off. Because I actually have you uh, go in, and yeah, it's down. So that's great. We're going to need that later. We'll come back to that. So now that we have our IP address, we're going to set up that Nessus scan from our host. All right. So we need to uh, do a new scan. And I just need to do a vulnerability scan. So I'm going to look for 
They have all these different crazy scans with Nessus. So I'm going to do a basic network scan. And this should suffice. It'll find a bunch of problems. And just name it CIS uh, 4670 Lab 2 Dash. And this was number one, I believe. And scan for number one Lab 2. Targets, put that IP address in. Now, again, your IP is going to be different than mine. All right, so keep that in mind. Credentials, you can give credentials if you want. So host credentials, go here to Windows, and you can say username is administrator. Password is change me one, two, three. There is no domain. I'm going to uncheck all these. Why not? <laughs> Let's see what happens. And plugins, I have all these plugins, so that's already set to go. So from there, I'm going to hit save. All right. Then I, um, after I get this all set up, I'm going to check it and I'm going to click launch. And let it do its thing. So there we are. And we're going to let that run through as that's running through. Let's go on to number two. So once that's done, we'll be able to grab the PDF that we need for uh, the scan. And then we'll just embed it into this Word doc that you're going to upload. Oh, actually, provide a screenshot of the dashboard. Whoops. After install. I'm getting ahead of myself. I apologize. So, this is fine. So, let's just go and open up Snipping Tool. Snipping Tool is moving. Oh, wow. Not today, it's not. Make sure you get your time down there at the bottom. And we'll copy that. We'll go to here. So after number one, and paste it in. <clears throat> There's our screenshot. So I know you got it, that in there. So on number two, we're working on that right now with uh, the scanner. So we'll go on to number three. From your scan, you should find that there's an FTP server running. Uh, it. What vulnerability does it have? We need to fix that. So. We'll get that from the scan in a second. Uh, there are several services on the server that are running that are vulnerable <clears throat> through this single platform. So that again uh, relies on the scan. Uh, let's see, so we'll come back to that. Uh, number five, check your server's password policy. What is it set to? Is it set? <laughs> Fix with a policy that meets NIST standards. So, uh, first off, we need to uh, get into the global policy. So I go start, and I'll go to administrative tools, local security policy right here. So under local security policy, I will have local policies and I'm sorry, account policies, password policy. Here we are. So under password policy, I have all of this. So as you can see, this is what it defaults to. Zero passwords, let me expand this a little bit, uh, remembered. 42 days. That means I can have the same password forever. All right? Password, age, 42 days. 
minimum password age zero days minimum password length zero and uh, complexity is junk so yeah it's not set and then I'm gonna change that so uh, so NIST standard find that uh, as far as your NIST password policy standard, that's a simple Google search. But I'm just going to say, uh, do not keep passwords. Passwords remembered is going to be 12. I'm going to say 10. Apply. Password age, that's a little bit tight. Let's go ahead and make that 60. Minimum password age, zero. So they can change it after immediately. So keep that zero. Password length uh, doesn't have a, a minimum length. So let's go ahead and make the minimum length uh, 10 characters. Again, check the NIST standards to make sure you get the right one. Password must meet complexity, yes. So the complexity, if you hit the explain tab, that'll tell you, okay, this has got to have all these things, a capital, a lowercase, a special character, at XYZ. So... Make sure that's enabled. Store passwords using reversible encryption. You do not want to store them using reversible encryption, so make sure that stays disabled. All right. And from there, screenshot that. Make sure you get your timestamp. Paste it in there. There we go. I opened up paint accidentally. I did not want to do that. So, number six. There are several OS vulnerabilities. If possible, fix them by running Windows Update. So, for this, this is going to be quite complex. Uh, first off, let's go back to see how our scan is doing. wrong browser still running so let that do its thing so with this yeah uh, you're gonna get a bunch of stuff from Windows Update so on the VM Windows Update is not enabled it's not enabled at all so if we go to administrative tools control panel control panel oh, yeah control panel Windows Update you double click there you can see oh it's off so we need to turn it on so install new Windows update software to check for updates you must first install update Windows update so yeah I don't even have Windows update installed on this thing yeah that's a problem so there we go And it's interesting to note that Windows 2008 and Windows 2008 R2, Microsoft is, uh, they are no longer publishing public updates to it as of January uh, 2020. But for businesses of all sizes, enterprise, small business, etc., they can buy like a warranty service and they can get security updates. So 2008 is going to be ex uh, extended if you buy the uh, software for it uh, legitimately from Microsoft for an additional four years I think I think it's going to expand through 2023 or 2024 okay so let that do its thing let's go back and see how our scan is doing it's still running so I'm gonna pause right now because I'm at like 24 minutes of this lecture I've only done like two things okay so I'm gonna pause this until the scan is done and the Windows update is done actually folks I'm gonna go ahead and go through seven and eight uh, and nine real fast and, and potentially ten so we need to create a lot of these accounts so we need to ensure that we have Sam Brandy Tom yourself your name and me uh, and some of them are already in there so if you go I'm just gonna minimize this as it's running uh, if you go to uh, start administrative tools 
I'm sorry, control panel, and you go to user accounts. Okay, uh, you can add users here, or you can go to that policy. This I can find this a little bit easier. Um, I believe it's under. Computer management, maybe? Yeah, computer management and local users and groups. Okay, so here we can hit users, and there's all of our users. All right, so do we have Sam? Yeah, Sam, is he the CEO? Let's check. So there's Sam Smith, and he's a foreman. Oh, wow. So looks like Sarah was here. Well, I think we need to change Sarah. She's no longer the CEO. So let's go ahead and just disable her account. Maybe she got fired or something. And Sam, who was the foreman, oh, well, now he's the CEO. Oh, that's great promotion, Sam. So we'll do that. All right, who's next? Then we have Brandy Jones, who's a CFO. Well. We don't have a CFO, we have a controller, but we don't have Brandy. So if we right click here in this field and we go new user, so we'll do B Jones, because that's our standard. Brandy Jones password. We need to set it to something default. You don't have to do this uh, immediately. I'm not going to know it. This is for your own use, so I'm just going to set it to something. I don't need to know what that is. Make sure they they change in their first go round. Create. I'm gonna close that out. And now we see her right there. Oh, looks like we uh, we goofed. We made her her last name. So yeah. So all you have to do if you need to edit somebody, you go to properties. Her description is CFO. Her full name is Brandy Jones. There we go, and that's how you amend somebody. There we go, perfect. Who's next? Tom Hughes, IT manager. Let's see if we have Tom in here. Nope. So we can add another user, new user. T Hughes. Tom Hughes, description, IT manager. Give him a password. All right, create. Done. Who's next? Oh, you're next. So I'll let you make yourself. And then Brandon Brown, who's an IT consultant. And oh, looks like Brandon Brown's in here already. We have a BR Brown, so we can just edit. Brandon Brown. I'm going to put him in here. And I'll be right back. Alright, so after we have the, the users done and the password policy done, we need to uh, get the. Oh, that go out there. Sorry about that. Alright, so. We updated Mr. Brown. All right, so once you have all those done and they match up with what they're supposed to have here. Right. So now we have to uh, uh, do a... Screenshot of those users. So do my snipping tool, new. Go. Make sure you get the timestamp. Copy it and throw that in the Word doc. There we go. And then we have to place Tom, yourself, Brandon, and the administrators group. So here we're going to go from users to groups, and we only have two groups. Actually, excuse me, we have a lot of groups, but the administrators group is what we're looking for. And here we have administrator. So we need to add 
users. So if we just look at and do a description here, let's uh, look for Brandon. Check names. Nope. Cancel that. So uh, look for the object name. It's probably going to be the username. So BR Brown. If we check that. Oh, there it is. And we'll click OK. And then we had to put Tom T. Hughes. So add that. Check names. There he is. Oops, sorry. Cancel. And OK. So, and then add yourself in there as well and take a screenshot of that. So we know that you're in the administrator group. I didn't like that capture. I had a little too much over on my other screen. There we go. Edit, copy, edit, paste. There we go. All right. Set up number uh, Windows Firewall to allow FTP, SMTP, HTTP, and HTTPS only. So right now, the Windows Firewall is off. So we'll go ahead and fix all that. And if we go to, let's get out of here and go to Windows Firewall. We had up, uh, up to it already. So let's change it and make sure it's set to be on, which is good. Oh, I think we goofed. This should have been off on our scan. It should have been off on our scan. Uh, so you might want to go back and have to redo your scan. Make sure it's off. Otherwise, you're not going to get a whole lot of uh, other stuff. But that's okay. For the purposes of, of this exercise, it'll be fine. So here we need to put in exceptions. So for exceptions, we need to find SMTP, FTP, HTTPS, yeah, 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 yeah. And they may not be defined. Right? I can tell you right now, they're not. So we can add a port. Name, SMTP. Port number. 25. Make sure it's TCP. Click OK. And now I can find SMTP. Make sure it's checked. Do the same thing for uh, FTP. Port 21. All right. Just show me that you have uh, a couple of these. I think you can probably add like HTTP port 80. HTTPS 443. Alright, once you have those there, screenshot that. There you go. And number 10, with number 10, you're going to find an antivirus online. So uh, we can just simply go to Google. Uh, server 2008 antivirus 3. Do, 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 do. So you should probably use AVG. You can even do a free trial, right, as a download and install it. You have to, might have to give some information out on that. Okay, and you can just, the free trial will be fine as well. So uh, there's that one. There's also some other open source ones out there. Uh, there's also ClamWin. Uh, you can go to www.clamwin.com. This is a free antivirus that you can download and install there. Uh, I would suggest that you go onto the actual VM to do that. All right. So after all that is said and done, click OK, 
you want to change the settings um, so you want to update recommended settings that's fine so you green that up okay okay so if you go into Firefox <clears throat> Yes, I want Firefox as the default browser. So I found ClamWin AV download. I think it was ClamWin.net. clamwin.com There you go. Clam win free antivirus released. So yeah, it's in there. You may download and use it absolutely free of charge. So maybe it's this top one here. Download the latest version. Hundred and sixty four megabytes. So that'll take a minute or two. go. I do not want I right, gotta wait for that. And there's my download. We'll save that to our downloads folder. Let's go back and check our scans, shall we? Oh, looks like our scan finished. So let's go to that scan. And it didn't look like it did anything for us because there were no high criticals or anything else. All right. Uh, to do that, you need to get the uh, you can scan it with uh, the firewall off. And once that scan is done, you can make a copy of this and put it in to the word here. The, the the screenshot actually not the screenshot the PDF so you can download that I goofed a little bit uh, on my scan so you may have to rerun your scan with the uh, sorry with the firewall down and then you go to the report and then you can get the PDF there so you can get with the executive summary, etc. You can generate it. <clears throat> and then you can either embed the report here uh, uh, or just give me a screenshot of it, of the front page, which will have the date. There it is. Yep. So there you go. So let's make sure that you have that. Get a screenshot, or you can embed the PDF as well and put that in in there. Uh, from your scan, you should be able to find the FTP server running. That's XAMP. So you can just go into XAMP and lock that down. So. Oh, I'm getting system unsupported. Oh. <laughs> did that download? It sure did download. Okay, so it's not that Clam's unsupported. It's telling you that Firefox is unsupported. All right. So, get a screenshot of this. You're going to have a couple of screenshots for the um, Windows update. 
so let me back up here a second because I'm, I'm bouncing around all over the place. Xamp. Sorry, Xamp. So right here, I should have. Minimize, minimize. There, Xamp control panel. Okay. So I have the file Zilla, which is running the FTP server. I can just uncheck that or tell it to stop, I should say. There, FTP service stopped. And then I can uncheck the service. All right. So that kills it. So screenshot that. So that's number three for the FTP service that killed it on Xamp. All right. So there are several services on the server that are running and vulnerable through a single platform. That's Xamp. So what you need to do here is update Xamp. So that's going to be the trick. And I'm not going to do everything for you guys, but. The trick here is if you go to Xamp and you look at help, it will tell you that it is running the Xamp Apache Friends Edition. Here, oh, there it is, Control Panel version 258, 2009. So, what you need to do is either uh, update this to another platform, or you can go and get the latest version of Xamp. So, again, real simple. Two Ps. Okay, we'll go to downloads. And and lo and behold, wow, we're on version 7310. Or yeah. And here we're on 258. You guys do the math, okay? Several versions back. Download and install it. You can uninstall this one first and then reinstall it. Show me that. Hey, look, we're on version 7 whatever. Screenshot and that's where number 4 will go. Okay, and that's about it, folks. So I kind of covered everything that we need to do other than the install of the Clam AV. Uh, all I need on Clam AV, get out of here. So if I go to my downloads folder. I can find my download folder. Should be here somewhere. There it is under administrator downloads. Uh, there it is. Clam set up runs administrator run. Next, hopefully this will work. I'm doing this live. It better. Let anyone use it. And next, and next, and next, and sometime today, and install. There we go. Should be pretty quick. So it's going to download updates. We'll come back when this is done. So in the interest of time, I just hit stop on that and finish. 
and down here you're gonna see clam AV if you double click on clam AV alright update it now you can click no and just show that you've gotten it in here you can go ahead and play around with uh, the scan and everything else <clears throat> And I can scan the C drive, the D drive, whatever. So I'm just looking that you got it installed. Or you got something installed. Alright. So do that. Then, then do a scan you have to do a scan so you can do this and then you run a scan against your C drive for example it'll run then once that is complete take a screen capture of that and put it in the Word doc as well after this after your installation number 11 create a document this is very similar to what you did in lab 1 um, you can find several templates uh, I give you one there and this is just actually this is not like lab 1 I take that back uh, this is just a general inventory document for the system to gather a bunch of information about applications that are running, um, the upper operating system, etc. So this is pretty simple. I just want something that you document because documentation is a big deal, obviously, um, that you, we have to do as IT professionals. And that's it. Um, go ahead and save this, upload it into Blackboard, and we'll call it a day. We'll call it a lab. So uh, there's a couple other things I left to you for uh, uh, purposes of separating the A students from the B students. Um, so I hope you guys have fun with this lab. This is uh, Professor Brown uh, signing off. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.